Hi, I'm John Curry, and today we're replacing the factory Raptor rear end with the new F9 full floating 9 inch rear end. One of the weak links in the Raptor is the rear end, and we have the solution. If you want to drive your Raptor like they do in the commercials without worrying about failures, then you need to upgrade today. Installing the new Curry F9 Raptor full floating rear end is fairly simple. The first steps are to get the truck in the air and the back wheels off. Make sure that the truck is secure with good quality jack stands or a lift. Unbolt the drive shaft and either tie it out of the way or remove it. You may need to use a rubber mallet to unseat it from the yoke. Unbolt and remove the ABS sensors from the backing plates on both sides. Also unbolt and disconnect the ABS lines from the housing. Remove the factory vent hose from the housing. Unbolt the factory brake line distribution bracket and separate it from the housing. Unclip the factory electric locker plug from the center of the housing. Unclip all of the ABS wire attachments along the housing and place them out of the way. Unbolt both calipers and remove them from the rotor. Use zip ties or wire to hold them out of the way without binding the factory brake lines. Unclip and remove the e-brake cables on both sides. Unbolt the shocks at the housing only and let them hang out of the way. Slide both brake rotors off of the axles and set them aside. We will be using these again. Remove the rear cover on the factory housing. Be ready to capture the oil when the cover is broke loose. We will be using the factory brake backing plates so the axles must come out. For the next few steps, if you're careful, you will be able to get the backing plates off and the axles back in without losing the spider gears and shims in the factory carrier. Unbolt the center pin retaining bolt and remove it. Gently slide the center pin out of the carrier. Carefully push one axle inward towards the center and remove the C-clip. Once the C-clip is removed, pull the axle out and unbolt the brake backing plate. With the brake backing plate removed, slide the axle back in and reattach the C-clip. Once one side is done, repeat the same steps on the other side and then replace the center pin and retaining bolt. At this point, the factory housing is ready to come out. As you can see, the new housing is much larger with four inch by 250 inch wall tubes, heavy duty bracing, 35 spine axles, and Curry's patent pending full floating hubs. Before removing the housing U-bolts, it's important to properly secure the factory rear end. Once the housing is secure, unbolt the U-bolts on both sides and lower the rear end out of the way. Make sure everything is disconnected and clear from snagging the housing. Now that the rear end is out, you can see the difference between the factory U-bolts and the new heavy-duty U-bolts that are included. Also, you can see how much bigger the F9 4-inch axle tubes are compared to the factory housing. Special brackets have been incorporated so all of the original lines and wires reattach in the factory locations. Place the new F9 rear end back under the Raptor and either raise it or lower it to meet up to the factory springs. Place the factory bump stop spacers in between the new housing and the leaf springs. Use the new supplied U-bolts and retaining plates to secure the leaf springs and housing together. We recommend using Loctite to ensure the nuts stay tight. Tighten them evenly with an impact wrench. Reattach the shocks on both sides at the housing. Once the housing is secure, place the factory backing plates onto the rear end on both sides. Use Loctite on the factory nut threads and tighten with an impact wrench. Pack all four of the new hub bearings with grease. To ensure that the axle seals seal into the hub, use a little RTV silicone. Place the hub bearings into each hub and then gently tap the seals into place. Once in place, add a slight amount of grease to the sealing surface of the seals. Place the other bearing into the outside of the hub and slide the hub onto the spindle. 
slide the washer into place on each hub. Slide the nut on and tighten. Once tight, back the nut off and then re-tighten and torque to 35 to 40 foot-pounds. Slide the locking washer into place on each hub. Use the supplied Allen screws to secure the locking washer to the nut. Use Loctite on the threads. Next, place the O-rings into both hubs. Slide the new axle into the housing on each side until the splines enter the carrier. Add a little grease to the outside splines before sliding on the drive plate. Once slid on, add Loctite to the supplied screws and tighten the drive plate into place on both sides. Before attaching the drive plate caps, add a little grease and place the O-rings into the grooves. Use Loctite on the cap bolts and tighten them to 12 foot-pounds. Once the hubs are in place, it's time to move on to the brake lines and wires. Reattach all of the line brackets and wire clips. Make sure to use Loctite on all of the threads. Slide the factory ABS sensor back into the backing plates and tighten. Slide the rear end vent hose onto the new housing. Reattach the e-brake cables on both sides. Next, slide the factory rotors back into place. The center hole on the rotors must be opened up to 3.700 inch. Slide the brake calipers onto the rotors on both sides and use the factory bolts with Loctite to reattach them. If you completely remove the drive shaft, slide it back onto the transmission splines and then align the bolt holes with the rear end yoke flange. Use Loctite on the drive shaft bolts and tighten. The new Curry F9 Raptor rear end does not use the stock electric locker hookup. Use electrical tape and a zip tie to seal and place the factory plug out of the way. Before attaching the tires, add oil to the F9 rear end. We recommend 9 plus gear oil for all Curry rear ends. We do offer an upgraded skid plate for even more off-road protection. It's a simple bolt-on piece when added at the time you order your F9. The installation of the Curry F9 Raptor rear end is complete. Make sure to check the tightness of all the bolts and to reattach and torque the wheels and tires to the manufacturer's specifications. Please note that the new Curry F9 Raptor rear end does require that the center hole on the wheels be 3.700 inch, which is slightly larger than a factory rim.